Hi, this is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got another massive $20,000 comic unboxing. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. If you watched my prior video where I unboxed around $23,000 in comics and did a comparison with that versus an Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, this is relatively similar. I've already done that comparison, so I don't, I don't need to go over that again, but I have a lot of books <laughs> that I need to get opened. And because I've been filming these different types of videos where I've been doing market videos and uh, comparisons of the different books within runs and how much they've moved, I've kind of neglected opening <laughs> some of the boxes that, that I've had coming in. So. I have a large pile of them, as you saw in the intro. Uh, so I've got, you know, these two boxes, then these two. I've got uh, this very large <laughs> box, then uh, this guy here, and these two boxes. So I have a lot of comics to get open and I will go over prices again similar to what I did with the AF15 comparison video just so you can see why I purchase books in this manner. Now the other thing like I've mentioned in my prior videos I buy a lot of books but I also sell a lot of books uh, so I do also need to get a lot of these open so that I can you know list them sell books so that then I can go out and buy more books and find other cool books that I've been looking for. So with that, I'm not going to make you watch me unbox all of these. So I'll open all of these up off camera and then I'll come back and we'll do the haul video for these. So stay tuned because there are some cool books in here from across all ages and I am really excited to get into these. All right, we're back. So that took a long time to get all those open, a lot of packaging, a lot of bubble wrap. So luckily, you know, you didn't have to sit through that. But now I've got a pile of a lot of books and there's some really cool books in here. There's a pretty big price range in the different books. And like I said, they cover everything from modern all the way back to golden age. Now I don't have them ordered exactly in order of value, but I do generally have the more expensive books kind of near the end. Uh, I'm going to go through the raws first, then I'm gonna go through the graded books. There are about 35 raw books and there are 20 slabs. So let's get into this. All right, now the first set of books. These ones, uh, this was a, a lot that I picked up and I picked them up specifically for one book. And I know this may get some hate from some people, but after what happened with the Miles Morales preview book, uh, this was a lot of some different previews and they do have some value. So I decided to pick them up. Uh, this is one of them. This is uh, the preview for Black Panther number one. And this book itself is worth over a hundred dollars. So this is definitely uh, it has some value to it. The other one is this preview, which is a very popular cover, especially with Jane Foster uh, appearing as Thor. So this is another preview that I thought was worthwhile picking up that could have some value. So uh, Now the last ones, these ones are all just kind of cool covers. And so I don't know if there's really as much value with them. The, the main value from this was the first two and this was just some really, you know, some cool covers with Thanos, uh, Spider-Man, uh, Angela, who is a character that has gotten much more popular recently in that uh, Spawn number nine. Just a really cool Green Goblin cover. Uh, Spider-Man and Deadpool. And then the Death of Spider-Man. Oh, and yeah, one more than the, the preview for The House of M, which I thought that was pretty cool because that was a very popular big storyline. So those are just some, you know, some previews. These are definitely the on the, the lower end of the price for, for the books that I, that I picked up. But just some something I thought was kind of a, a fun spec given what happened with the Miles Morales preview. Now let's get into the rest of these raw books. The first one here is from the Golden Age. This is Attack number five. I just thought this was a, a pretty cool war cover. It's in lower grade, but still, uh, uh, nice colors, pretty violent cover. Uh, it, it's not World War II, so that they don't tend to have as much value, but still uh, a good cover. The next one is a Golden Age crime cover. 
and this is all true crime number 28 and you know again just kind of a violent scene on the cover and just one that I thought was was just a uh, with, with the popularity picking up of these pre-code books, uh, just some that I thought were, were fun to pick up. Now these next two, this was actually, this is something different that I've never bought before. And if you haven't heard of pulps, pulps are essentially books, but they have some pretty amazing cover art. And a lot of very famous cover artists worked on pulps as well. Now it tends to be the more risque you know, the cover is, the more it's worth. Uh, the first one is this spicy Western stories. And this one actually has quite a bit of value to it. And the grading with pulps is not the same as the grading with comics. It, there's, I believe it's, there's basically like three levels where it's good, very good or fine, and then and very fine near mint. It, it's very generalized. But this one is actually has, has quite a bit of value to it, uh, probably around $150. You can see these are a lot thicker. It's basically, you know, it's a book. And, uh, but some really amazing cover art. Now, the other one, uh, this one, even though it has a really cool cover, it doesn't have nearly as much value as that. This one's probably more in the $50 to $75 range. And this is Fantastic Adventures. I just thought this was a really cool kind of devil cover with, you know, the good girl type art on the, on the front. And uh, just a, another cool book, you know, again, very, very thick. And so pulps are something that have been getting more popular recently. So if you haven't heard about them, maybe something that's worthwhile to look into. Now the next one was a three book lot and I basically got it for this book. And so this is Weird Mystery number 21. And I, so there's three books here, Weird Mystery 21, Weird Mystery 20, and Weird Mystery 16. Uh, so there you go. And But Weird Mystery 21 is a Bernie Wrightson cover. And the Bernie Wrightson covers, he, he's a very popular artist. If, I've talked about him before. He was responsible for House of Secrets 92, the first appearance of Swamp Thing, and he just has some amazing cover art, and some of these books that he did have a, quite a bit of value to them. And this one was in relatively decent grade, you know, pretty good grade, so I thought it was, was worthwhile to pick up with the popularity of Bernie Wrightson. Now the next one, we're getting into some pre-code sci-fi, and this is Weird Science number 11. And again, it's a lower grade book, you know, you can see the, the damage up here in the corner, and um, there's, you know, there's like a, there's a spine roll. Let's see it here. There's a spine roll on it, but really cool cover. I mean, you've got rocket, you've got the, the moon and, and earth up here, and I just, it's, it's a cool cover. It's with these EC pre-code books, and these ones are very popular and, and have quite a bit of value to them. Next one, we're jumping into DC, and this is Superman number 140 and this is just a very high grade earlier superman book and so you can see here you know this is a it's a clean copy you know there's there's a, there are a few spine ticks but in general it's a very clean copy and that's just something to be aware of with early dc the dc runs started quite a while before marvel i mean i know there's the early captain americas with timely and all that but when we're talking superman batman a lot of those books don't carry much value unless you have them in very high grade, even if they're, they seem early. You know, it could be from the mid 50s or early 60s and has very little value unless you're up near the nines. And so that's just something to be aware of when you're talking about early DC, uh, late, uh, late golden age, early silver age. Those books, you really need to find them in high grade if they're going to have any real value to them. There's just not a lot of value money-wise, you know, for sales, that kind of thing in those books. But that one is a nice, a nice copy. Uh, this one is Flash number 126. Again, just a, another nice grade for an early Silver Age book. There's a little, you know, fold on the corner down there. But in general, a very clean copy, probably around a 7.5, something like that. This next one. Now we're going pretty early in the Golden Age with this book, and this is World's Finest number 10. And again, a low grade copy. You can see all the wear that's on the cover of this book and uh, how beat up the spine is. If I remember correctly, I think the spine or the cover is detached or it's something like that. But still, very early World's Finest. World's Finest are often extremely campy covers. 
And so when you get them when they're when they're not <laughs> this or whereas this one like this one doesn't have that real kind of campy feel to it. Uh, they can uh, those are the ones that I like to get. But again, you can see how thick the world's finest books are. There there are a lot of pages in these. So when you, if you get them, make sure you do the page counts, check and make sure everything's there because the likelihood of missing a page is <laughs> a lot higher in a book like that. All right, next one we've got X Men number twenty, and. Nothing really overly key or significant with X-Men number 20, but this is, again, it's, it's a nice grade for this book. You can see it's a, it's a clean copy, even with the, you know, the Mylar making it, you know, look even nicer, but it's a clean copy, uh, probably somewhere in the 7.5 range. And X-Men is just so hot right now that any early Silver Age X-Men is, is worthwhile to, to get and especially if they're in higher grade. Now, some of these books like that one where it's not really a, a major key or anything, you do want them to be in pretty high grade to have any real value to the book. All right, next one. This is Secret Origins number one. Again, just a, a earlier Silver Age book, and it's a nice copy. I think this one was somewhere around a seven, something like that, and, and uh, just a nice bright cover, cool book. And it's always good to get number ones. Number ones are never bad. Again, this is a very, uh, let's see here, this is a very thick book. And uh, something to be aware of with this one, there is a second print with this book. And so if you're, the first print, this one I believe is 1961, the second print I think is 1973, and it has a, uh, the top part here is red instead of this pinkish color. So just be aware that there is a second print of that and you want the first print. <laughs> That's the next one. This was a book I had been trying to get for a while, and I was happy to pick this one up. This is Showcase number 79, and this is the first appearance of Dolphin, and just a, I mean, it's just a beautiful cover. The, the colors, the, that color fade or sunburst, whatever you want to call it on the cover is just incredible. I think this one was somewhere around a seven. You can see some spine wear. You know, there's, there's a little bit, but a really clean book. No big creases or anything like that. And uh, just very happy to uh, to get that book. Now, next one. I mentioned Amazing Fantasy 15. I'm so close with this book. <laughs> this is Amazing Adult Fantasy number 13. Two books before Amazing Fantasy 15. But uh, just this is that pre-hero monster type cover that Marvel was doing. And again, a, you know, a, a nice-ish copy. There are some creases down in the corner there. I think there's a little bit of chipping on, on the edge, but in general, no big creases on the cover. A, a nice presenting copy. These pre-hero monster books, they can definitely have some value. There are certain ones that are worth more than others, but I just thought that was kind of cool getting that one just because it's so close to <laughs> Amazing Fantasy 15. All right, now we've got Green Lantern number nine. And this is the second appearance of Sinestro. This is, it's not a high grade copy either. There's a, uh, you can see it. There's a crease, oh, there it is. There's a crease on that upper edge there and it's a pretty long crease, probably about five, six inches. And so this isn't gonna be a high grade copy, but it still presents pretty well. And the first appearance of Sinestro has gotten pretty expensive lately because he's expected to be in that Green Lantern HBO Max show. And so that book has gotten pricey, so I think a second appearance there, especially because he's on the cover, it's a cool cover, and first cover appearance. So I think that's a, a cool book to get, especially with how expensive uh, his first appearance is getting. All right, now we're gonna jump back into some Golden Age, and I I just, this book again, doesn't have a lot of value, but I thought this was a, this was a crazy cover. Uh, this is Crime Does Not Pay, number 40. And you've got this dude that has cards stuffed in his mouth that looks like he's been killed there and this woman uh, that's trying to stab a guy, a guy with a gun. I mean, this, this, is, this has got a lot of great elements for pre-code uh, type books and so I thought this was a, a fun book to, to pick up. All right, now we've got another World's Finest book. This is World's Finest number 74 and again, it's not a campy cover. I thought this was kind of kind of cool with the Superman signal and the bat signal on the cover. It's a lower grade copy. You can see the wear on it, just the regular surface wear as well as the, the spine wear, but it's still cool cover, not real campy and pretty early for World's Finest. It's, you know, it's a pre 100 World's Finest book. 
and, uh, and you can see there's there's no comic code here so this is this is pre comic code all right now i've shown books from this run before uh this is boy comics number 16. i uh this was just an early golden age book i thought it was a, a good price decided to pick it up and this other one here is boy comics number 19. you see this this guy is pushing this other guy onto the subway track so little little violent there again not real high grade books or anything but just early golden age some some good books I, I like to pick up I like going after some of these early golden age books now this next one I, this is a really nice looking copy it even though it's it's kind of a campy cover it's from 1941 this is big shot comics number 11 and I mean Look at the, the spine on this book. I mean, that is a clean looking copy. It does have what's called, you can see these uh, these dust shadows along the edge here, where that's created when you have another book sitting on top of it and this edge of this book is exposed. And CGC actually does not grade down much and sometimes not at all for them, depending on their severity, age of the book. Um, there are books that I've seen that are 9.6, 9.8 that have dust shadows. Now, I don't think that's at all what this is, but but still, it's a very nice presenting copy. 1941, really nice looking cover. And from that same run, I have Big Shot Comics number 16. Now, this one I, I liked because this is a, it's 1941 again, but this is a war cover. You know, you've got a tank on the cover. And so this is during World War II, this, there isn't anything on here identifying this as a World War II cover, but this is from 1941 during World War II, so having war-themed books from that age is, is always good, good to get, and so I thought this was a pretty cool book to pick up. Now, unlike that last one, this one does have some World War II elements to it, and this is Don Winslow, number four. You can see you've got the, the swastika, uh, right down here also on this guy's helmet and so I thought this was a anytime you can get those type of elements on a book I, I've talked about that before there are certain elements you want to look for when you're talking about golden age books and when it's a war type book you want to look for those elements like swastikas rising sun flag that kind of thing that that indicate that this was the era that it was in that this is this is related to world war ii so again not not a very high grade book but i thought this one was kind of cool with the uh, world war ii you know swastika tie into it all right now this one i picked up just because i thought this cover was was really funny uh, this is torchy number three and <laughs> you got this guy that just got married and he is whistling at torchy as she walks down the road and uh, his, his wife doesn't look very happy with him. So <laughs> I thought this was just a, a great cover. It was uh, just a better fun book to, again, to pick up. Now this next one, this one is a high grade copy. This is Adam number one. And this is a, this is a nice copy of this book. And so you can see it's got a, you know, it's a, it's a very clean spine. There is a little crease down in this corner here. And there's, uh, again, a little damage down in, in this corner here. But this is a nice copy of this book, which can have quite a bit of value to it. Now, this next one here is Strange Adventures number 180. And this is the first appearance of Animal Man. And again, this is a book that's in pretty high grade, and it can have a fair amount of value when you get into high grade. It starts to jump in price pretty quickly as, as the grade goes up, because they're just aren't a lot of them in high grade. Now, this is another one that it will be interesting. I'm thinking of sending this one to be graded. It'll be interesting to see how it grades because similarly to the other book, this has that dust shadow down on the bottom edge there. And, uh, but, but otherwise you can see, this is a, it's a nice copy. Um, you know, clean corners, clean edges, a little bit of damage on that top edge, but uh, in general, a very nice looking book. Now this is the last raw and I saved this one because this one has by far the most value of the books that I have here. And this is a cool book. This is Super Mystery Comics, number one, volume one. And this is the 
first appearance of a bunch of characters, but one of them being this character called Magno the Magnetic Man, and I like to think of him as basically the first prototype of Magneto. I mean, he even uses the little, you know, Magneto fingers and everything <laughs> to, to move stuff, um, but this is a very nice presenting copy. Uh, there is a chip out of the back cover, which is what, what hurts the grade on it, but very nice presenting copy, 1940, and uh, just a, a cool first appearance book. Definitely one that I plan to send in to get graded. I thought this was an incredible book to come across. Not a book that you will see very often. All right, so now let's move on to what I think everybody is probably most interested in, and that is the slabs. And for this first book, if Omega Red is watching this, you know, go check him out on Instagram. It's Omega underscore Reed, but pronounced Red. Uh, this is a book I know he likes, and I think he'll uh, get a kick out of the fact that I picked this one up. And this is Creepy, number one. And this is the first appearance of Uncle Creepy. But this is a run that ha ended up having a quite a bit of Frank Frazetta art in it. And he's actually in the he did the interior art or some of the interior art for this book. You can see his uh, his name up here. And so, Frazetta art and Frazetta covers are always extremely popular, and always recommend picking those up. And this is a Silver Age horror book, 1964. So it's not pre-code, but they do often have some really cool art on them. Uh, definitely something that you might want to check out if the pre-code horror, pre-code sci-fi type books start getting a little too expensive. Check out Creepy and Eerie. Those are both uh, runs of books from the Silver Age that cover that type of topic and uh, definitely something that can be very affordable, worth going after. Uh, the next one here is Golden Age, Good Girl Art, Bondage type cover. This is Rangers Comics, number 17. And you can see this is a pretty violent war cover as well. You know, a, a soldier getting run through <laughs> on the on the beach with this woman tied up to a tree. So uh, just a, a early book. This is from 1944. So again, this is one of those books that was during World War II. Those are the types that tend to have a, quite a bit more value, especially when you're talking about war themes and you, know, you add in that element of a good girl art type cover. Now this next one, I, I was very excited to, to be able to pick this book up. This is Shocking Mystery Cases, number 51. This is an L.B. Cole cover. This is from 1952. And if you've watched one of my prior videos, this may look familiar because he used a very similar theme on Suspense Comics number nine. And I, I personally like Suspense Comics number nine more. I like that the kind of the spiral is in the eye, but you can see how he ups the violence and kind of that like creep factor on the later book. So. The Suspense Comics is from 1945, this one, and the Shocking Mystery Case is from 1952. So you've got these bloody heads on the other one, a lot more violent, but I like the Suspense Comics one with the eye a little more, but still, two very cool books with it from L.B. Cole, and I was just excited to be able to pick this one up, given uh, that one, it was an L.B. Cole book, and two, how it, it ties into this book, the Suspense Comics number nine. All right, the next one, I've got another L.B. Cole book, but this time it is a romance cover, and this is Confessions of Love, number 13. This is from 1952, and so L.B. Cole, he did more than just pre-code horror, sci-fi, that kind of stuff. He also did quite a few of these romance-type covers, and it still has his very traditional style, these bright, contrasting colors, and just a, a, another book I thought was cool to pick up. I always like trying to get L.B. Cole books when I get a chance to. I just think he's one of the best cover artists to pick up for the Golden Age. All right, so we're all the way back in the Golden Age. Now we're gonna jump up into modern, into 1989. This is Caliber Presents, number one. I've shown a copy of this in the past. I had an 8.5 that I've sold previously. Uh, this is a 9.2, and this is the first appearance of The Crow and there he is on the back. So the back cover is a lot better than the front cover of this book. Uh, so this, the reason this one is important is because, like I said, first appearance of the crow, it doesn't have as much value as crow number one, but still a pretty valuable book because of that, that first appearance. It's also got you know pretty violent front cover, but, uh, but the main thing is, is that first appearance of the crow and that back cover. All right, the next one, going to the Bronze Age, we've got Amazing Spider-Man, number 124. 
This is the first appearance of Man Wolf. It's in a nice grade, a 9-0 with white pages. And just a character that there's the potential that this character will show up as Marvel moves into more horror type themes. And so just a book that's been getting a little heat behind it. And so I, I thought it was a, a good book to pick up. And it's never a bad thing to go for, for Spider-Man keys. Spider-Man keys are always going to have value, always popular. He's just, he is the most popular character out there. So never a bad thing to pick up Spider-Man books. All right, now I've got another Rangers comics. This one's from 1947, and uh, this this cover is just awesome. So we've got we've got a shark on the cover, guy with a knife that's stabbing it. You've got the good girl art, headlights type cover, and down in the bottom here, you even have a skull. And so there are a lot of great elements on this cover. I've talked about that in the past about Golden Age books, the types of things you often want to look for for those books because there's just there's so many of them out there, and so the ones that will often be more collectible, will have things like sharks on them, uh, an octopus, uh, the good girl art type covers, the, the skulls are always a big deal, and so uh, I just, I thought this had a lot of those elements, it was a really cool book to get. Now, I, I've shown this book as well in the past, this is a lower grade copy though. This is Marvel Premiere, number 15. This is the first appearance of Iron Fist. This is another book that has been getting much more expensive recently. Um, there's speculation that Iron Fist is going to be coming potentially to an MCU show with Power Man and so this book has been getting much more expensive as well as Hero for Hire number one which is the first appearance of Luke Cage who is Power Man. And so these books in any grade, they, they used to be pretty cheap down in this grade but they're getting more and more expensive so recommend trying to pick up copies of this book if you can. Alright, another pre-code horror book. This, this cover is pretty awesome. This is 1952, and this is Tales from the Crypt, number 28. It's a low grade, you know, it's a, it's a 1.8, but I mean, this is, a, this is a messed up cover. You've got this guy that's been buried alive. I don't know if he's gonna be able to punch his way out like in Kill Bill, but <laughs> he looks like he's in a little bit of trouble. Now this book, it's, it's a 1.8 for a reason. Now it presents relatively well here, but there is a lot of water damage to this book. And so even though clearly you can see that this book has not been pressed, and this is what I'm talking about when you, when you see that. You see all that waviness, all those little wrinkles, everything like that. This book hasn't been pressed. It's got a big spine roll. So when I say spine roll, I mean you can see the pages here with the back cover. And so you can see that up here where the, with the spine, where the staples aren't on the, the edge. And so this book would benefit from a press, but would it actually improve the grade? Probably not. Uh, just that amount of water damage and everything, I mean, I don't see this book getting any higher grade. It just might present better if it had a press. But pre-code horror, especially these EC titles, Tales from the Crypt, always are worthwhile to pick up, especially ones like that. All right, now one more pre-code horror book here, and this is Eerie, number six. Now this is a different run of Erie. Erie had a few different runs. This one is from the Golden Age. This is 1952, and I just thought it was a, a cool cover and decided to pick it up. Like I've said before, I always like picking up pre-code horror books. They are just getting more and more popular, and I, I think they're worthwhile going after. And I just thought it was a, a nice bright cover. No real big creases or anything, so it presents really well despite being a 4.0. And um, just another, Another great pre-code horror book. All right, so I've got 10 more slabs to go. <laughs> and the first one, and I've shown this book a lot. This is Special Marvel Edition, number 15. This is the 12th copy that I have. This is a obviously a 5.5. There's quite a bit of damage up in this corner here, but in general, other than that, it presents pretty well. It has some, some spine wear and everything, but I mean, I, I can't say enough about this book. I mean, it's just, I think it is a very undervalued book, even now, and I think once that movie comes out, if there is success with that movie, and we see that that character is going to be in the MCU long term, I think this book is just going to continue to go up, continue to have more and more value with it. Now this one I picked up specifically because of the Carnage trailer. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 362, and this is a newsstand, but it is also signed by Stan Lee. And 
I, I think this cover is significantly better than his first appearance. I love this cover. I think this cover is incredible. Uh, adding in a, a Stanley signature. Now, I, I've mentioned this maybe in the past. I'm not a huge fan of Stanley signatures on books that he didn't directly work on. Um, but I, I still I, I understand the importance of Stanley with Spider-Man, and so I, I get I get the signature there. I'm just I generally like it if if the you know the person who signed it's who signed its name is is up here. But but still uh, I think this is an awesome book. A great second appearance cover. Just an incredible cover. Now there is, I believe, a second print of this one as well, so just be careful when you're looking for that book that you pick up the first print and not the second print. Now sticking with Amazing Spider-Man, I've got Amazing Spider-Man number 43, and this is the first full appearance of Mary Jane. And so I talked about that in my Amazing Spider-Man video that I released earlier this week, how her first appearances are just a mess. and. So issue 42 is the one that I showed the picture from where it's the first time you see her face and she calls him Tiger, that kind of thing. Issue 43 is the first full appearance. She has a first cover appearance where she's dancing on a stage. She has a first cameo where she, where they mention her name but then you don't actually ever see her. So there's just a bunch for this character, but it's a cool Rhino cover. Second cover appearance of Rhino, origin of Rhino. And so I just think this is a, a cool book. And my, my family calls me Rhino. And so that's always kind of like something that I've been called. And so when you see, if I sometimes wear a shirt that has a picture of a guy biking with a Rhino head on it, that's the, that's the reason behind that. Um, so, you know, just a, a fun character for me. Now, this is another book that has been getting way more expensive lately. And this is Marvel Premiere number one. And it's the first appearance of the Warlock. And this is another book where his first appearances are extremely messy because you've got Fantastic Four 66, then 67, where he's just in the cocoon. You've got Thor 165, which I consider like his first full appearance. He's on the cover. That's where they just call him him, though. He doesn't actually get called Warlock. This is the first time he's called Adam Warlock. And so this is another great one to pick up. There's also Strange Tales 178, I believe it's 178, which is the first appearance of the Magus, which is like the evil version of him. And so there's just all kinds of first appearances for this character. But this one, I think, I think the biggest two first appearances for this character are this book, Marvel Career Number 1, and Thor 165. If I was going after any books for him, it would be those two. The Strange Tales book might be another one in case they ever decide to go down that storyline with Marvel with the Magus because that's a pretty big storyline with Marvel. So that's another good one to potentially pick up. Now I've got another pre-code horror book, another Tales from the Crypt. This is Tales from the Crypt, number 23, from 1951. And just a, another creepy, cool cover. Again, low-grade book, a 2-0, slightly brittle pages, but still, just... Great looking cover. Again, it's another book that it could maybe benefit from a cleaning and a pressing, but you need to be very careful when you have a book that has uh, brittle page designations or slightly brittle. Now, the thing with CGC and the designations of those brittle pages, all it takes is a little bit of the interior pages to be brittle to get that designation. And so it could be that there's just some small part of the interior that is brittle, and so getting it pressed and cleaned isn't going to damage the book further. But if there is extensive brittleness to those pages, you could end up detaching the cover or something, making it significantly worse than it is. So you just want to be careful when there are those brittle page designations. All right, now this next book, this one is pretty cool. This is Zoot Comics number nine. This is Jack Kamen and Matt Baker art. And this one, this has that element I was talking about. You've got this octopus down in the corner here, grabbing onto uh, Rula, the jungle goddess. You've also got, you know, this woman with the, the cat ears and everything, which I, th I think is, I think is kind of fun for the, for the golden age. But I mean, this, this is a cool book. This is a great book and a very high grade. This is a 7-0 from 1947. And I was just kind of joking about this one when I when I picked this book up. I thought it was funny that, you know, they're in the jungle, but there's an octopus. Like, <laughs> somehow just to have it so that you have this octopus grabbing onto her. Now, I looked up the, the story to it, and apparently 
there's a it, it goes with the, the story one of the characters brought this octopus into the jungle to try to scare some locals and uh so that's why the octopus is there but i i still think that's that's a pretty funny one to have this octopus in the jungle so that it can grab onto around the cover all right now this one this is a book i was surprised i was able to pick up and this is star wars number 68 and a 9.6 just love this cover and while i believe this isn't boba fett on the cover he is in the interior now this book has gotten a little more affordable recently and this is one of those things that i know tivo from lords of the long box has talked about where it's like a lot of times comic collectors will have a very short term memory with some books and because there hasn't been a lot of talk about star wars in a little bit and people are focusing on things like wandavision and falcon and the winter soldier and loki that the Star Wars books may be getting a little more affordable, and that's something to watch for because they are coming back. We know there are more shows coming up, there's more movies, and those books are going to explode again. And so you can pick these books up now if people aren't paying attention to them, I would do it because you know those books are going to spike again because those characters are coming back, and this is one of the better books to get. I mean, it's a cooler cover, I think, than 42. 42 is obviously the first appearance of Boba Fett. It's got the most value to it, but I think this is a great book to get. Another one to look out for is number 81. I do have a 9-8 of that. That's another one where it, it's his return to the storyline where he gets out of the Sarlacc pit. So that's another great book to look for if you're looking for Boba Fett type books. Now the next one comes with my love of high grade newsstand books. And I actually already have a copy of this, so I'll be selling one of them but this is another important book this is marvel team up number 141 a 98 but it's the newsstand here again so it's got the barcode instead of spider-man's face uh, it's from 1984 and so it's getting right around the time where there's an equal number of newsstands and directs but like i have mentioned in other videos just because there were more newsstands does not mean there are more newsstands in 9.8 those newsstand books took a lot more damage and so even when there were significantly more newsstands, getting them in a 9.8 is much harder for most titles. It's not always the case, but for most titles. And so this is important because it technically ties Amazing Spider-Man number 252 for the first time that you see Spider-Man in the black suit. I believe it actually was released about two weeks later. So uh, you can see up on the description up here, ties with Amazing Spider-Man 252 for the first appearance of the black costume. But it did come out about two weeks later. It's the same month in the in the little description up here, though. But that's why this book is so important, because, again, it's that early appearance of the black suit, which is just a big game changer for Spider-Man. So the really, the, to me, the, the, the three big books to get for that are Amazing Spider-Man 252, this book, Marvel Team-Up number 141, and then Secret Wars number 8. Now, Secret Wars number 8 is quite a bit later in the year. It's like six months later but it's the first time that you have the symbiote origin. So that's, when he's here, he's just wearing a black costume. When you're in Secret Wars 8, that's when it's actually the symbiote. The next one, I've had a few copies of this book. This is the nicest by far, and this is Ghost Rider number two and a 9.6. I mean, this is a really nice copy of this book. And I've always liked the blue up here, this kind of like powder blue color on the top. I think it really pops with the red. And this is the first appearance of Damien Hellstrom and the Son of Satan. So this is a book that it's cooled off a little bit because of the Hellstrom show only getting one season on Hulu. But there is a lot of speculation out there that these characters are coming back. Ghost Rider is extremely popular. Uh, Marvel seems to want to get into this horror type realm. And so these are characters we could definitely see. And so I thought this was a, a great book to pick up and just awesome to get in a high grade like this, you know, nine, six. Now I'm down to the last book and I am super excited about this one. And this might be a book that a lot of you aren't familiar with. It's a modern, it's from 1985. This is Albedo number three. And this is a 9.8. It is the second appearance of Usagi Yojimbo and you can see him on the back cover here. And there is a Netflix show that's coming out with this character, or supposed to be coming out with this character. It is an extremely popular character, and his first appearance has been going for a ton of money. 
Um, a 9.2 sold on May 16th for 9,200. A raw sold on May 16th for 12,900. A 9.4 sold on February 7th for 10,300. And back in 2019, a 9.8 sold for 31,000. And it's not a common book. There are not a lot of copies. There are only 200 blue labels of Albedo 2. 251 total and with albedo 3 there's even less there's only 235 total with 189 blue labels and only 20 in a 9.8 so this is a rare book in a 9.8 and it uh, it just looks incredible i am very excited to get that because albedo number two is a little pricey <laughs> for me uh, i'm not really looking to to drop nine or ten grand on a, a modern book like that but this one, this was much more affordable, like I said, going after those second appearances when the first appearances get way more expensive. And while he's not on the front cover, it is pretty cool that he is on the back cover. I think that's awesome. So I was really excited to be able to pick up a copy of this book because uh, there are some pretty crazy numbers being asked for uh, the nine eights of this book now. Now, I did mention that I would also talk a little bit about pricing, that kind of thing. And so Based on when I purchased the books, the total estimated value of these books was $20,980, but what I paid for them was $13,341. And so that again is one of the reasons why I like to purchase books like this instead of one larger book. Now, like I've mentioned before, there are benefits to buying one larger book. Then you only have to sell one larger book if you're moving it instead of, you know, 40, 50 different books. But if you're looking for value with, with the books, then this is a great way to get it, able to get some great prices on these books uh, compared to their going market value. And also just able to get some really cool books, you know, like this one and then just real high grade Ghost Rider number two. I thought that was a really cool book to pick up. And then some cool Golden Age books in there too, like that Zoot number nine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you saw some new books maybe that you've never seen before. Maybe some books that you're gonna go out and try to find yourself now. And if you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.